This is our first Surface Book 2 15-inch test. This is a rendering test. This was inspired by Reddit and where someone was asking how DaVinci resolved it with the Surface Book. So I decided to test it out and then compare it with Adobe Premiere and then another underdog, PowerDirector. Obviously, everybody's heard of Adobe Premiere. So let's see which one does better. Initially, I was having problems with Resolve when I was trying to open it when it was connected to my laptop. So I had to disconnect the big screen from the laptop is what I'm trying to say. And now I'm going to zoom in as you watch the playback potential here. This is a 4K file that I was given for the test in Resolve. It looks like a phone review. And as you can see, it's playing back pretty smoothly at 24 frames per second, 23.976. And then under Performance and Task Manager, you can see that it's using about 52 to 50% 50 to 52% of the CPU. And I have it set on performance mode. And I have it plugged in. So let's see here. So right now I have it at 24%. Now it's at 34%. It's still at, OK, you see it went down. OK, so now it's back at 24 frames per second. And it seems to be playing pretty smoothly. So let's take a look now at 100%. At 100%, it's still only using about 57% of the CPU. Now it's up to 73%, 74%. So when you play it at full size, it does use more of the CPU. And it's also using some of the GPU as well. Let's see. Here, I'm going to open it up again with another file. This is a 3.2 gigabyte file of a promotional video one of my associates and I were making. This is 1080p 60 frames per second from a Panasonic. FZ2500, I believe. So as you could see here, it's kind of blurry, but it's it's playing at 60 frames per second, 59 frames per second. So that's playing pretty well at 100% uh, full size there. So that seems pretty smooth. You can hear it, but it wasn't study, stuttering at all. And let's go ahead and check out what's going on with the CPU, the processor. So it's using 44 to 46% of the CPU and 34% of the GPU. So that's pretty smooth. So we're going to go ahead and do a render test with this same exact file again. This is actually 3.5 gigabytes, so it's a pretty big file. It's not a small file. So first we're going to render this file in DaVinci Resolve, then we're going to test it out in the two other programs. And I think you're going to be pretty surprised by these results. OK, so this is a setup for Resolve. I have it set up for QuickTime format. Uh, 60 frames per second. And I'm going to start the rendering now. So what I noticed right away, I tried this several times, is that I was kind of disappointed by DaVinci Resolve. Just based on the initial, the initial time, it was over 35 minutes to render. And I also noticed something else strange which made me even wonder more why it was taking so long. Because if, if you could see here when it ever decides to 
focus. It's 37 minutes right now, and it's only a 18-minute video file. But it's using a lot of the GPU here at 36%. And if we scroll over, it's using 93% of the CPU, over 90%. So now let me move this over so you can see it here. 92% of the CPU. There's a lot of RAM available. There's almost four gig, over 4 gigabytes of RAM available, so I'm not using all the RAM for this. The computer has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And the processor clock sp speed was over 2 gigahertz for most of the time. But it's using 32% of the GTX 1060 too. But it's still taking forever to render this file. I really don't get it, so it's actually using it. And it's using the Intel GPU, 12% of that. So I don't really know why this is taking so long, because uh, I think 35 minutes is a little long just for this, because I'm not doing anything else to the file other than rendering it. I didn't do any effects or anything. So that's over 30 five minutes in rendering time for that 17, 18 minute file. Now let's go ahead and test that same file in Adobe Premiere. So I'm going to just save the file here and show you the setup. It saves, so as you can see, test Adobe MP4, 1080p, 59.94 frames per second, same file, hit export, 17 minute and 20 second video file, and then this is giving me the initial estimate here, starts out looking good at 12 minutes, now it's 14 minutes, 15 minutes, so it keeps going up, obviously it's going to take a lot longer than 15, it's already up to 16, so I'm um, I'm going to use my phone to time it and see how long this takes. So let's go ahead and, and look at the performance while that's rendering. Remember, DaVinci Resolve was using 92 to 93% of the processor. Let's check out Adobe. It's a little bit lower. So we got about 80. 74 to 83, 74 to 83, it's using more RAM, maybe that's because I have other programs open, but it is using a lot more RAM. It's not using any of the 1060 graphics card, and I tried this several times to try to make it use it, but it's using the integrated Intel 620 graphics card, that's the weaker version that just comes with the chip. The gaming graphics card, it's not using at all. So I was surprised by that. But this is what actually surprised me even more, is that it still ended up being 25 minutes for rendering, even though it didn't use the GPU like DaVinci Resolve did. So it's faster. Is utilizing the CPU and a processor and RAM and everything to render it faster. I was hoping for a better result than this, though, but what really surprised me is how well PowerDirector performed with this same file. I'm going to move the same file over with PowerDirector. This is in PowerDirector. I love this program for fast rendering. If you're doing vlogging, just short videos, Power Director is quick, it's fast, it uses the GPU better, and it just it's just fast. <laughs> That's what I like about it. It's not the best for doing all the effects, though. Adobe Premiere and Resolve, and obviously, um, if you use Mac, Final Cut may have better effects, but I think it's pretty comparable to Final Cut if you're coming from a Mac. So 
I believe it's even faster for rendering. So let's see what happens here. I have it set with the same settings. It's going to uh, compress it a little more because the default settings here is 24 frames per second at 1080p. But this file ended up being rendered in 7 minutes and 50 seconds for the 17 minute file. As you can see here, it's going to say time remaining at the bottom of your screen, 7 minutes. And that's about how fast it took. Now I'm going to render this specific video we just created, and I'll let you know how fast this video rendered, rendered in, which was 4K files as well. So I'll let you know at the end of this video how fast this video rendered. This is an 11-minute video right now. But if your goal is fast rendering times, I highly recommend you get a copy of PowerDirector because it's just it's way faster than Resolve and Adobe Premiere. For advanced editing and effects, obviously, you would want to use the more professional programs. So we're going to go ahead and test it at 1080p, 24 frames per second. 5,000 kilobytes per second, and the file size is going to be about 421 megabytes. And this cool little feature is Intel Quick Sync Video. It helps speed up the rendering. I believe that's what makes it a lot faster, so I'm going to hit Start. First, let me make sure I'm saving it correctly. All right. Start and we're off to the races. Uh, so right now it says six and a half minutes. That's pretty fast. So I'm guessing it's going to slow down a little bit. But as you can see here, the CPU usage is only 40 to 40 percent, around 40 percent. But then it's using 50% of the integrated GPU at times, which is what I think allows it to speed up so quickly. I don't understand why other programs don't utilize this, because then I could use those other programs. But this just blows them away with the speed. As you can see, it's using 40 to 50% of the integrated 620 GPU, which is a weaker GPU, but it's still making the rendering speed really perform a lot faster. And as you can see here, it's still less than 40% of the CPU that it's using. So I could do other things while this is rendering at this speed. That's to me is great. I don't, this is an Ultrabook. This is not a desktop gaming computer. And as you can see, three and a half minutes have passed. And the final result is 8 minutes and 51 seconds. That's how long it took to create a 400 megabit file, 393 megabits, megabytes. So if you want fast rendering times, use PowerDirector. For the fancy effects, obviously, you could still use Adobe Premiere or Resolve. So we'll see you next time on our next test.